What a lovely spring day. Well, hello there, Squiggles. Enjoying this beautiful morning? And where are you off to? Oh, on your way to church for Easter Sunday. And I see you've brought your very own Bible. Do you have any favorite Bible stories? Oh, yes. The story of Adam and Eve, the very first people living in God's garden. Until a sneaky snake tempted them to eat the fruit from God's special tree. God had warned them not to eat the fruit from the special tree, but... They did it anyway. Adam and Eve had to leave God's garden after that, but God stayed with them because God loved them. <laughs> oh yes, the story of the flood. I like that story too. When things had become so bad in the world that God decided to flood the entire earth, God made sure two of every animal was saved. <laughs> Along with the animals, God also saved Noah and his family by having them build a big boat called an ark. Can you imagine being stuck on a boat with all those animals? Ugh, oh, it must have been a very long trip. But God looked after them. What's that? The story of Moses? You're right. That is another story of God's people being stuck. Many years after Noah, God's people, the Hebrews, were stuck in Egypt as slaves. God sent Moses to tell the ruler of Egypt, Pharaoh, to let God's people go. But Pharaoh didn't want to let the Hebrews go. So God sent many plagues to change his mind. Plagues like frogs. And gnats and flies. And darkness. At last, Pharaoh gave up and told the Hebrews that they were free to go. There are a lot of stories in the Bible of God helping people. <laughs> stories like God helping young David defeat the giant Goliath. Or God protecting Daniel when he was thrown into a lion's den. or God helping Jonah change his mind by having him swallowed by a giant fish. Such wonderful stories of God's love and care for people. But Squiggles, do you know the greatest story of God's love? It's the story of Easter. Oh, do you not know the story of Easter, Squiggles? 
It's a very powerful story about God's Son coming to Earth, and it's all right there in your Bible. <laughs> Easter is the story of the Messiah, the Son of God, who was born a long time ago. And he had come to Earth to be a very special king. Yes, Squiggles, a king. A king like no one had ever seen before. And that child grew up to be this man. Jesus of Nazareth. Well, yes, Squiggles, I know he doesn't look like a king. He doesn't have a crown or anything. But Jesus was a different kind of king. Jesus taught people everywhere about the kingdom of God, the importance of loving one another, and having faith. Jesus' teachings were sometimes very different from what people had heard before. Jesus said, if someone hurts you, don't hurt them back. If someone asks you for help, say, sure and remember to share what you have with other people. People hadn't always thought like that before. Then Jesus said something very important. Everyone says love your friends and hate your enemies. I say love your enemies and pray for people who are mean to you. This is what really makes God happy. Oh. It would be very difficult to love someone who doesn't like you. Huh? Isn't that a surprising message, Squiggles? <laughs> and not everyone was happy with what Jesus was saying. Some people thought that a king was supposed to help them defeat their enemies, not love them. They didn't understand that Jesus was a different kind of king. <laughs> a king of peace. The things he taught changed how many people thought about treating others. He called for us to love everyone. Isn't that a wonderful message, Squiggles? Oh, what a cute baby! No matter where he went, Jesus called for men and women, boys and girls, to drop what they were doing and follow him. And many people did follow him, like Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and James, Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Thaddeus, Simon, and Andrew, and another James, Susanna and John and Judas. Oh, and we mustn't forget Peter. Yes, Peter, who Jesus liked so much that he gave him the nickname the rock. <laughs> Peter and the others were called the disciples, and they followed Jesus everywhere. <laughs> well, everywhere in the ancient Middle East, that is. Mostly they walked places. <laughs> But sometimes they traveled by boat. Oh, did I not mention Squiggles? Jesus also performed many miracles to help people and help them understand who he was. Miracles are amazing things that are only possible through God. Uh, Peter is still working on the whole miracle thing. But Jesus, through the power of God, healed the sick. He calmed a storm. And he made a little food into a lot of food to feed many, many people. <laughs> Jesus even told the dead to come back to life. <laughs> and they did 
come back to life. <laughs> Happy and healthy. <laughs> Because of these miracles, even more people came to listen to Jesus. Until one day, Jesus turned to his disciples and said, Friends, I'm going to the city of Jerusalem. I have some important things to do, and I want to celebrate Passover with you there. Will you come with me? Did you hear that, Squiggles? <laughs> Passover. <laughs> oh, you'll love Passover. It's a Jewish holiday celebrating the story of God's people, the Israelites, leaving Egypt. And such good food. It's so wonderful to be with friends and family at Passover. Let's go. What do you suppose Jesus is waiting for? Oh, that's right, Squiggles. Jesus borrowed a donkey to ride into Jerusalem. Oh, look, Squiggles. The donkey likes you. Oh, how sweet. Well, off we go. Look at that. The people of Jerusalem are all singing and shouting to welcome Jesus. They're waving palm branches and laying them down before him. They're really giving him a royal welcome. These people know that Jesus is a very special king. It is just like a parade. Squiggles, you've always wanted to be in a parade. Oh dear, those people don't seem happy about the parade for Jesus. Not at all. Some of the temple leaders said, Hush, Jesus, tell your friends to be quiet. It's way too loud here. I don't think they realize that Jesus is a king. Jesus said to them, We can try to make these people be quiet, but that wouldn't make a difference. Today, the whole earth is celebrating. It looks like Jesus is right. No one is quieting down. They're all too happy. It's all right, Squiggles. They're gone. But I'm afraid we haven't heard the last of them. When it was time to celebrate Passover, families gathered in their homes for the traditional meal. But the Passover that Jesus had planned was a little different. Hmm. <laughs> Before the meal, Jesus washed the feet of each of the disciples. Well, back then, people's feet got very dirty from the roads. I mean, look at your feet, Squiggles. So it was a normal part of life to wash your feet. But it definitely wasn't normal to have your feet washed by a king. This was very confusing for the disciples. A king would never wash someone else's feet. But remember, Squiggles, Jesus is a different kind of king. <coughs> Sometimes it was hard, even for his disciples, to understand just how different of a king he was. Peter, for instance, did not think it was appropriate for Jesus to wash his feet. Huh? When it was Peter's turn, he said, You will never wash my feet. Jesus explained, Peter, you don't understand what I am doing now, but you will. 
Peter loved Jesus so much that he said, then don't just wash my feet, but my head and hands as well. Mm. Being Jesus' little helper, Squiggles? Well done. Oh, and now that you've washed up, it's time for supper. Oh, and there's the bread for supper, Squiggles. And the wine. Oh, careful now. As they were eating, Jesus sadly told his disciples, soon one of you will betray me. <gasps> One of you will tell people who don't like me where I am so they can take me away. These words upset the disciples, and each of them asked if it was them. When Judas asked, It's not me you're talking about, is it? Jesus gently replied, Yes, Judas, you will betray me. I know, Squiggles. This is very shocking. How could Jesus say that? How could Jesus know that? Well, after that, Judas left pretty quickly. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread. He blessed it and gave some to each of his friends. Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Did you hear that, Squiggles? No, I don't know what he meant by that. None of the disciples knew either. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, Drink this. It is my blood which I must give up so the sins of people may be forgiven. Huh? Well, this is all very confusing, isn't it, Squiggles? Mm -hmm. That's all right. The disciples were confused as well. No one had ever said or done anything like this before in the entire world, let alone at Passover. When the meal was over, Jesus went to a place called the Mount of Olives to pray. No, Squiggles, that's not normally part of Passover either. Oh dear, it looks as though everyone has left. And there they go. You'd better hurry if you want to catch up. What are you doing with that cup? And what is this spoon for? And a loaf of... Oh, I see squiggles. Very clever. Jesus sadly told the disciples, Soon you will all leave me. <laughs> Peter told Jesus, Even if all the others leave you, I won't. Jesus said quietly, Before the sun rises, you will pretend you don't know me three times. <gasps> Peter said, I love you too much to ever do that to you. And all the other disciples agreed that they would never do such a thing either. It seems as though Jesus knows something that we don't, Squiggles. And he seems very sad. What do you suppose is going to happen? When they came to the garden at the Mount of Olives, Jesus asked the disciples to stay awake with him while he prayed. Huh? <laughs> 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 Jesus knew that very hard things were going to happen soon. Please, God, Jesus prayed, do you really need me to do this? If you do, please help me. Make me strong. You're right, Squiggles. It is a good time to pray when you're facing hardships. Oh dear, it looks like the disciples fell asleep. 
and after Jesus specifically asked them not to. Wake up. Wake up. See, said Jesus, my betrayer is at hand. Oh my, Squiggles. Judas had come back, and he had brought with him the soldiers of Jesus' enemies. Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek to show the soldiers who they were looking for. The disciples were so scared, they ran away and hid. But what happened to Jesus? Oh no, the soldiers have arrested Jesus. Later, Peter arrived outside the place where Jesus was on trial. A girl saw Peter and said, hey, Aren't you a friend of Jesus? Peter was afraid and told the girl, I don't know him. Wait, did Peter just deny that he knows Jesus? A woman joined the girl and said, But I saw you with Jesus. Peter said, No, I don't know him. He did it again. And another person said, You're definitely a friend of Jesus. Peter said again, I tell you, I don't know him. <laughs> I know. That's three times now Peter has... Wait a minute. This is exactly what Jesus said would happen. Before the sun rises, Peter would deny knowing Jesus three times. <laughs> Poor Peter. Peter felt so sad for Jesus, and he felt very, very sorry for lying. But it's all right, Squiggles. Jesus knew that Peter loved him, and I happen to know that Peter went on to tell many, many people about his best friend, Jesus. Oh, you want to know what happened to Jesus? Well, Squiggles... It's hard to believe, but many people did not like Jesus and wanted to get rid of him. I know, it does seem strange that anyone would not like Jesus, but they didn't. They didn't believe that Jesus was a special king or even a king at all. And they thought his message of love was dangerous, that it would change the world too much. What will happen to us if the people follow Jesus? They grumbled. Let's take Jesus to the governor, Pontius Pilate. He can get rid of him. Hmm. They told Pontius Pilate that Jesus claimed to be the king of the Jews. Hmm. They thought that would get Jesus in trouble for sure. Hmm. When Pontius hmm. Pilate saw Jesus, he asked, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus didn't answer. Pilate thought kings ruled over countries and people. Jesus knew that his power was about loving God. His kingdom was not the same. Pilate was being asked to get rid of Jesus, but Pilate didn't think Jesus had done anything wrong. <laughs> Pilate didn't understand who Jesus was or why people didn't like him, but he also didn't want any trouble. So he agreed to get rid of Jesus if that's what they wanted. And they didn't just want to get rid of Jesus, Squiggles. They wanted to kill him. Yes, I have to be honest with you, Squiggles. This next part of the story is very, very sad. So we have to be brave. 
Are you ready to continue with the story? All right. The soldiers who arrested him teased Jesus for pretending to be a king. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They made Jesus carry a heavy wooden cross. The cross was too heavy for him. Jesus was too tired. But a man helped Jesus. They put Jesus on the cross and raised him up on a hill between two other men. The other men were thieves who were also being crucified. One of the men was angry with Jesus. If you are a powerful king, can't you save yourself? Why don't you save us too? But the other thief believed in Jesus. Don't you know who this is? This is God's son. Jesus hasn't done anything wrong, the thief said sadly. We are being punished for our mistakes, but Jesus shouldn't be here. The man turned to Jesus and asked, will you take me to heaven with you? Jesus looked to the man and loved him. Jesus told him, yes, today we will be in heaven together. After a while, the world grew very dark, as if a terrible thunderstorm was coming. It was as if all of creation was crying because Jesus was about to die. Jesus was feeling all alone and prayed to see if God was still there. Of course, God never left Jesus. God was with him the whole time. Jesus looked at the crowd. He was so sad that people didn't believe that he was God's son. He asked God to forgive them. Jesus said, God, the work you gave me to do here is finished. He breathed a final breath, and then he died. I know, Squiggles. It's just terrible. As I said, this was a very sad part of the story. But there is hope. Yes, because this isn't the end of the story. Three days after Jesus died, four women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome, and Joanna, were on their way to put spices on Jesus' body. Yes, Squiggles. Back in those days, it was a custom to put spices on people who had recently died. The opening to the cave that held Jesus' body was sealed with a huge stone. But when the women arrived, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. They peeked inside and saw the cave was empty. Jesus was gone. <laughs> Suddenly, an angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. Will you look at that, Squiggles? An angel. They always have big news from God. I wonder what this one has to say. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus isn't here. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. <gasps> Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the other disciples that Jesus has risen. <laughs> the women hurried to go tell Jesus' friends what they had seen and heard. <laughs> Wait, now who is this? Could it be? It was Jesus. He did it. He really did it. Jesus had come back from the dead. Hello, friends, Jesus said. Go tell the others the good news that I am alive. I will meet them in Galilee. I can't wait to see them again. 
Yes, Squiggles, it's really Jesus, and he's really alive. But we can't just stand here. You heard Jesus, we have an important job to do. Everyone has to be told that Jesus is risen. In the coming days, Jesus began to appear to the disciples. Hey! <laughs> Yes, the disciples were so happy to see Jesus again, alive and well. Except for one disciple, Thomas. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus appeared. When he got back, the others excitedly told him the good news. But Thomas said, I don't believe you. I will only believe when I can touch Jesus' wounds. A week later, the disciples still had not convinced Thomas that they had seen Jesus alive and well. I know it seems that Thomas is being stubborn, Squiggles, but it can be very difficult to believe in something you haven't seen. Have you ever had to believe in something you can't see? Jesus then appeared before Thomas and said, Peace be with you. <gasps> Thomas, Jesus commanded, come here. Give me your hands, said Jesus. Put your finger on the wounds in my hand. Put your finger by the wound in my side. Do not doubt anymore. It's time for you to believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Jesus then said to him, You believe because I'm here with you and you've seen me. Think of those who have not seen me but believe in me anyway. You should believe even when you cannot see it for yourself. Now once they were all back together, Jesus told them to meet him in a special place. So all the disciples did as Jesus said. They knew Jesus must have wanted to tell them something very important. What do you suppose it could be? This is so exciting. I can hardly wait to find out what it is. This is going to be some big news, Squiggles. Oh, I'm sorry, Squiggles. I forgot to mention that special meeting place is on top of a mountain. Come on, Squiggles, let's not let something like this stand between us and Jesus' big news. <laughs> Just think of all the amazing things Jesus will have to tell us, Squiggles. I mean, he came back from the dead. <laughs> Just be sure not to look down. Also, we should avoid looking up. Maybe we should just focus on climbing for now. Well done, Squiggles! You made it! From here, we have a wonderful view of the mountain Jesus will be meeting the disciples on. When the disciples arrived, Jesus greeted them warmly. Peace be with you, he said. I have things to tell you. God has given me all the power in heaven and earth. Did you hear that, Squiggles? Jesus was given all the power in heaven and earth. 
Whoa, said the disciples excitedly. Wonderful, fantastic. What will you do first, Jesus? As you know, God is doing amazing things in the world, Jesus said, and your help is needed. My goodness, Squiggles, Jesus needs our help. What could he possibly need our help with? We need you to go tell my story, Jesus told the disciples. Tell your friends and family and everyone you meet what you've learned by following me. Be my witnesses in the world. Did Jesus just say we have to tell everyone about him? Everyone's a lot of people. You made it, Squiggles, and you're just in time. <gasps> and remember, Jesus said, I will always be with you. Then suddenly, Jesus was rising up in the air. And Jesus rose up and up into the clouds. So what do you think the disciples did then? They did just what Jesus told them to do. Everywhere they went, they shared Jesus' good news. They healed the sick. They shared all that they had and taught about everything they had learned from following Jesus, even when it was dangerous to do so. And many people listened. And then those people told more people. Then those people told even more people. And the story of Jesus spread all over the world. And you know, Squiggles, someone told me the story of Jesus, just like I'm telling you the story of Jesus right now. Because when we share the amazing story of Jesus, we're sharing just how much God loves and cares for all of us. So you see, the story isn't over because everyone is a part of Jesus' story. Yes, Squiggles, you're a part of Jesus' story as well. That's what Easter's all about remembering and sharing the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Now, you'd better hurry off to Easter service, Squiggles. You wouldn't want to be late. You're very welcome, Squiggles. Oh, I thank you. And a happy Easter to you too. Thank you.